the clock is ticking toward the expiration of the U.S. debt ceiling. We're joined today by Congressman Ron Paul uh, from Washington, D.C. Congressman, you've been in the Capitol all day. What is going on there? <laughs> Not anything very productive. Uh, matter of fact, on the House floor, there's no discussion other than a few conversations. Everybody's waits to see what those who are in discussion with the president will come out with. Uh, but right now, uh, I don't think anybody's anticipating much to happen this week. Matter of fact, I checked around to figure out, uh, to find out if they thought something big would happen next week. Not much, except maybe there'll be a vote on a constitutional amendment uh, to require a balanced budget. But that has no immediate effect, obviously. But uh, I think it's related to these discussions, maybe contributing to a long-term solution. But uh, right now, everybody's just sort of holding their breath to find out what is going to happen. And now we have these sort of shots fired across the bow of, you know, Moody saying we may downgrade the U.S. credit rating. On the other hand, in the, in the bond markets, they seem, investors seem remarkably complacent. The 10-year bond's at around 3%. Is that complacency yeah. misplaced? Should investors well, start freaking yeah. out about the U.S. credit? Well, I think they would if they knew what was really coming. But uh, I think the people who establishes uh, those rates, of course, the Fed has a contribution to that, but also those who buy and sell bonds and have a lot to do with the value of these, uh, you know, longer-term instruments, I think they think day-to-day, -day and they don't think out from year to year. But if you ask somebody that's buying a bond today whether they would be content to buy a 30-year bond or even a 10-year uh, treasury uh, bill and keep it for 10 years and think it's a good investment and cash it in 10 years. I don't think anybody thinks of it that way. I think it's it's almost out of desperation. People buy our dollars as well as our debt mm -hmm. because everything else is such a bad choice and they do that just to have a temporary place to put their put their money. Right. But more and more people are getting skittish about it and I think that's why people are resorting to <coughs> going to gold as a, as a uh, reserve and a place to put their money. All right. So on the debt ceiling, the way it looks from here is the president is saying, I want to do a deal that involves spending cuts and some uh, tax increase or revenue enhancements, whatever you want to call them. There are signs that maybe in the Senate there's some interest in that. But in the House, the answer is, you know, no deal, no way, no how. It has to all be uh, spending cuts. Is that where you are? Yes, but uh, I get there secondarily. Uh, if we want to change our uh, problems, you know, long term, we have to change our attitude about what government's all about. So, yes, that's essentially where I am for today and next week. I've never voted for any of the spending, so I'm not about to raise the debt limit. So they keep doing the same thing over and over again because we have to do something. But nothing's going to happen if we think that we are still the policemen of the world. Nothing's going to happen if we think that we can have entitlements from cradle to grave. And, and, and nothing will change. Uh, so I think the most dangerous thing we could do is to encourage the system to continue to do exactly what they're doing, and that is raise the debt limit, and there'll be no serious attempt to do something. If the individuals in Congress knew what how dangerous this is, they would say, boy, we better get our house in order, and the president would go along with it and said, we have to straighten this up in order to survive and preserve the dollar, which means would have to be across-the-board cuts because they're not about to all of a sudden decide that uh, we ought to bring our troops home and sensibly cut way back on all this militarism mm -hmm. and do something with Social Security. So I think uh, that's what we should do. It's not going to happen. Right. I imagine <laughs> the debt limit will be increased and our problems will be with us for a while, yeah. So you foresee something like this you know, McConnell option that's been floated, which is saying... Let's not have this gigantic debate and come to these decisions about the sorts of things you're talking about, big changes in entitlements, big changes in our kind of geopolitical strategy. Let's not let's put that off for another day and just kind of pass the debt ceiling limit and then argue about that later. Well, I think that's a, a terrible thing to do because it further erodes the responsibility of the Congress, delivers more power to the president. So uh, they can print money at will, they can go to war at will, and it looks like now they could, if, if that something like that would pass, means they could run up deficit at will. So th now, that to me would uh, be the wrong way to go. Now, there are some members of your caucus that are saying, you know, all this talk about default is just scare tactics. Uh, we've defaulted in the past. We've run out of money in the past. One of your 
rivals for the uh, GOP presidential primary, Michelle Bachman, has said, you know, no big deal. Would it be a big deal if we were to breach this debt ceiling and the U.S. were to default in some way, shape, or form? Sure, sure, it's a big deal. And, uh, and either way you go, it's a big deal. So if you didn't make the payments, it's a very big deal. I don't think that's going to happen. I think, uh, you know, this idea that there won't be Social Security checks, I think that's a bunch of scare tactics. But we're not going to default in the way they claim we are, like we won't send out the checks. Governments like ours never default that way, but they always default. The default is we pay our debts with money with less value. So if you can get, and Bernanke is actually working very hard at this, he wants the price inflation to go up so that the dollar goes down in value to the point where in two years or so that you can take a national debt of $14 billion, trillion dollars and turn it into $7 trillion of real value. So they want the dollar devalued and pay this debt down. That's how countries default. So the default right. is ongoing, and, people, and that is very, very dangerous. That's much more of a threat. It should be a more threat to everybody than this idea that uh, we have to slow up on our payments and pick priorities and pay, you know, pay the interest on our national debt okay. and do things in an orderly fashion. Well, you know, inflation is one way of making a, a big chunk of your debt go away. Uh, Congressman right. Paul, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.